everyone. Welcome back to the Adventures of Whiter Than Snow. Today we're on chapter four and we have the White Heart. <clears throat> it would be difficult to say who was the most miserable person when winter began to draw close to the hills of Switzerland. Annette, who held her mean secret in her heart, or Lucian, Lucian's wrongdoing was known, and he was shunned by all the boys and girls. Lucian's disappointment over not being able to win a prize was very great. He had thought this was his chance to prove that there was something he could do better than others. He was almost certain Annette had broken his horse, but he could not prove it. And there were times when he almost was glad that little Danny was a cripple, just because it made Annette unhappy. He knew how much she loved her little brother. <clears throat> Lucian often climbed even higher into the mountains and spent time carving. He had no friends. One day, as he sat on a tree stump carving, he heard a pleasant voice behind him. You carve very well, boy. I like to carve also. Immediately, Lucian guessed it was the old man who lived alone in the forest. He did not realize he had wandered so close to the tiny chalet. Folks had said the old man was strange, and Lucian knew the old man went to the village only when he needed supplies. Frightened, Lucian slowly turned around, and when he saw the kindly bright eyes of the man who smiled at him, all fear left him. They talked for a little about carving, and then the old man invited Lucian to come to the chalet and see his carvings, and Lucian went willingly. The old man lived alone except for a goat, some hens, and a cat which sat washing her face as they entered the chalet. Lucian noticed how tiny and clean everything was. He noticed also almost at once the beautiful carvings around the room. There were bears and cows and goats and St. Bernard dogs and squirrels. And there were little men and little women and gnomes and dwarfs and little children. And there were boxes with alpine flowers carved on the top of them. This made Lucian remember the alpine flowers he had snatched from Danny the day of the terrible accident. Noticing the cloud pass over Lucian's face, the old man said, Someday you'll be able to carve something like this. For a friend, perhaps. I have no friends, Lucian replied sullenly. Then you must be very lonesome, said the old man, putting his hand on Lucian's shoulder. I too am lonesome. I too have no friends. Would you care to tell me about your trouble? Because Lucian had longed to talk to someone, he found himself telling this, this man, who was a stranger, the story of his wickedness and his hatred of Annette and her hatred of him. This is not good, the old man said. You are too young, too young to be lonely because of your sins. I am lonely, and it's because of my sins, too. Yet there's a difference. You, my boy, seem very unhappy. I am lonely, but I am not unhappy. When Lucian looked at the man with a big question mark in his eyes, the man continued, This is perhaps the difference. I have asked God to forgive me and to cleanse my heart from sin. I have the Lord Jesus living in my heart, and he has made it as clean and white as the snows in our mountains. Have you asked forgiveness, Lucian? Lucian only shook his head. Walking over to the fire, the old man sat down in a high-backed chair. My boy, he said, you have trusted me. I would like to trust you. 
If I tell you my story, will you promise to keep it secret? You would trust me, Lucian cried out. Yes, I would trust you. Then I shall never tell your secret, never. I was a spoiled child, the old man began, yet I was able to get a job in a bank and to marry a lovely girl. And we had two fine sons and they were very happy for a few years. We were very happy. And then I began to drink and to gamble and use up all our money. <clears throat> and I lost my job at the bank for getting drunk. When I was not gambling, I was drinking. My poor wife went to work, but could not earn enough to keep us out of debt. I wanted more money, so I robbed a bank and was sent to prison. The old man looked out the window at the beautiful mountains and the sky, which seemed heavy with snow. He seemed to have forgotten Lucian. All this time, my wife tried to get me to confess my sin and to be cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus, he continued. He died for you, she'd often said. Won't you please put your heart and uh, open your heart and ask him to forgive you? He will come and live in your heart. His blood will make your heart whiter than snow. Yet it was not until she was dead and I was out of prison that I finally got to my knees and accepted the Lord Jesus as my Savior. I knew I was forgiven, but I had done great harm to my sons, and I made up my mind they should think of me as dead and go on living with their grandparents who were bringing them up to be fine Christian young men. And so, my boy, I have hidden myself in this chalet in the mountains, and I am lonely. I am able to earn enough with my wood carvings to get all I need, which is very little. The storekeeper in the village knows my secret. He sells my carvings and tells me from time to time about my sons. One is a businessman, and one is a famous doctor. He's a surgeon who makes many cripples walk again. The old man hesitated a moment, and then he added, And now for the big part of my secret. My doctor son is now staying in the hotel in our village. I saw him yesterday. He's a handsome man and a Christian, and I'm very proud of him. But he must never know that I'm his father. Promise you will never tell. Oh, it's not necessary. You already promised, and I trust you. Standing to his feet, the old man continued, If you can trust me, I can trust you. Can you not also trust the Lord Jesus who died for you, boy? Lucian got to his feet and began to turn away, and the old man laid his hand on Lucian's shoulder. It was this touch of love which broke the boy's stubborn heart, tears streaming down his cheeks, he knelt beside a chair and accepted the Lord Jesus who had died and risen for him. He too was made clean and right in God's sight through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Lucian's heart was made whiter than snow. How wonderful that Lucian has gotten saved. He asked the Lord to forgive him of his sins. Oh, how wonderful it feels to have a clean heart. Psalm 51, 7 says, Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to wash away our sin. That was our red heart, the, the blood of Jesus to wash away our sin. Then he rose again. He didn't just stay dead. He rose again the third day. He rose for our justification. Well, that's a big old word, isn't it? 
Romans 4.25 says, Who was delivered for our offenses, that means our sins, and was raised again for our justification. Do you know what that big word means? Think of it this way. Just as if I never sinned. When we receive the Lord Jesus, God makes us that clean. All our sins that we have ever done are washed away. Now Lucian will go to heaven one day. But what about you? Have you asked the Lord to wash away your sins? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, come back tomorrow and we'll find out what happens next in Whiter Than Snow.